Good morning, everybody. God bless you. Thank you very much. It's great to be here with you. Thank you for being out on a Saturday morning. Thank you for your love of the state of Illinois and your concern for growing our economy. Thank you for your dedication. Thank you for our elected officials. Thank you for your leadership. I look forward to close, working closely with you. I'm here this morning because I want to go to work for you. I love to work, and I love Illinois. I got my work ethic from my grandparents. They were dairy farmers in Whitewater, Wisconsin. With a little double white trailer, spoke Swedish, didn't speak a lot of English. They came here for the American dream. I want the American dream to become a reality for every family in Illinois. I want a better life for the next generation, every generation here in Illinois. I want us thriving. You know what? We have every reason to thrive. We have the best location of any state in America. We have the hardest working people of any state in America. We have the most fertile farms of any state in America. We have the capital, the heart of the Midwest right here. We should be thriving. But we're not. It's because of bad policy and bad politics coming out of Springfield. That's really the only reason. The only reason. We haven't had leadership. We've had cronyism, corruption, incompetence in our government. The government's not been run. It's not been run right. not been run for your benefit. It's not been run for the benefit of the people. It's been run for the benefit of insiders. Town in Springfield. And I'm no insider. I'm not a politician. I've never run. But you know what? I know how to get stuff done. And I know how to build teams of talented people. And I'm going to work for it. We've got three priorities. We're going to focus like a laser on three things. Focusing on our economy to make us competitive so we can grow. Become pro-growth, pro-investment, pro-job creation, number one priority. Number two priority, invest in education, hold our education system accountable for results, and have the best school system and vocational training system in America in every school district in Illinois. And number three, change the culture of the government so it's run right, get the conflicts of interest out of it, and get the government working for you again. Those are the three priorities, and we're going to focus on it. It's not going to be easy. It's not going to be super quick. But the time to act is now. We need to turn ourselves around in dramatic fashion because we're, we've entered into this long, slow decline, and we've got to change it. As, as was mentioned over the last 10, 12 years, we've lost net, net, net. We've lost over 275,000 people out of Illinois. Last year, we led the nation in out-migration and population loss. We're, the, we're a great place to live. We should be a wonderful place to live. People should be coming here. Companies should be coming here. And they want to, but our policies are pushing people away. And people are needing to leave for jobs or better jobs. Or people, small business owners, are leaving for more opportunity in other states. We've got to change that. No other problem we face can be fixed unless we change that. And I'm committed to you to make that happen quickly. So how do we do it? First of all, we deal with the regulations in Illinois around business. Our workers' comp system is broken and it's corrupt. Our workers' comp costs are out of control. They're pushing manufacturers and transportation companies out of the state. We're going to change workers' comp. Uh, we're going to change our tort system, our liability system. We have, we're the, one of the worst states for lawsuit abuse and out of control judgments. We're one of the few states where judges are elected rather than appointed uh, through merit, as uh, the, the American Bar Association recommends. And we're one of the few states where the trial lawyers that argue cases in front of the judges can give campaign cash to those judges for their elections. It's a fundamental conflict of interest. The trial lawyers are, are paying the judges to get elected and then arguing cases in front of them. That ain't right, ladies and gentlemen. That's a conflict of interest. <laughs> And our unemployment insurance. Look, when our folks lose their job, heaven forbid, I want nobody losing their job. They do. They deserve support. We deserve to support our unemployed folks. But we don't have to have one of the highest costs in America for that. We've got to be reasonable and competitive so our companies don't get pushed out. Let's, let's be reasonable in our support. Let's have good support, but let's be competitive. And then here's a key issue. And I'm, I'm all in, you know, folks, we've got labor leaders here, God bless you. Some people are trying to spin me as anti-union. Let me be crystal clear. I am not anti-union. My grandfather was a union guy. I got no issue with unions. I have issue with conflict of interest. And I have issue with being competitive. Now let's talk about this. This is a big deal. I want people to focus on what I'm saying. Don't listen to the spin and the baloney out there. Let's talk about the facts. I believe that joining a union is wonderful, join if you want to. I don't believe anybody should be forced to join a union. Okay? And people can agree or disagree with me. It's okay. That's what I love about, you know, America's a free place. We get all of our opinions. That's my opinion. I don't want anybody forced. But let me tell you what's going on. Around the nation, Texas has employment freedom. 
worker choice whether you join. Tennessee has it, Indiana has it, Michigan has it, Iowa has it. Iowa has employment choice, worker choice. Wisconsin's going to worker choice. I want Illinois to have the opportunity to compete. I want us to be able to compete. And I'm not saying, I never have said that I want Illinois to go to, to be a right to work state. I am not advocating that. I am not pushing that. But what I want is the ability for local communities to control that issue, to decide for themselves. And that's what is allowed under federal labor law. Counties and municipalities can decide for themselves whether they want to have employment choice and worker freedom or whether they want to have closed shop rules. And I just want to empower you to decide. If you want Rock Island County to, to be closed shop, terrific. Have it. And I'll help you compete as best I can. But if Rock Island County or Winnebago County or Washington County or Adams County wants to be able to compete with Iowa, compete with Wisconsin, and let me be clear, there's lists of companies, thousands of companies, that when they're expanding, they won't even look at a restricted state. You're either on the list or you're not on the list. Illinois ain't on the list. I want Illinois on the list so I can help you compete for these companies and these jobs. That's it. That's all I'm asking. That's all I'm recommending. It's fair. It's reasonable. And in, in, oh, around, this, around the state, to, within the communities and the counties where we want to keep uh, the current structure with the uh, union workers, fine. i got no issue with that. But free up our citizens, our voters, our residents and counties and municipalities to decide for yourselves so we can compete. And we're on the list. That's all I'm asking. I don't think it's unreasonable to ask that. I think it's very reasonable to ask that. Now, let's focus on education for a minute. Education is the key to our prosperity. Education is the key to a better life for our young people. It's the key to great careers and rising incomes. We have been defunding our schools. We have been de-emphasizing vocational training. We have been de-emphasizing uh, support for our teachers, and we've got to change that. Education is the most important thing we do. So, first and foremost, even though we got a financial crisis in this state, I, as governor, am going to increase the priority for education, and I'm going to increase K-12 support from the state into our school districts, especially right, like right here in Rock Island County in the Quad Cities area, where you are not getting a fair share of state support. We're 50 out of 50 states. We're the dead last state for state support of education. There is no excuse for that. We overly rely on local property taxes. That puts too much pressure on many communities where there's lower income families, and they can't, they can't afford to pay as much for their schools as they should, because their kids Kids deserve a great education irrespective of their family's income. Irrespective of their family's income, kids deserve a great education. So we've got to move away from over-reliance on local property taxes. So we're going to increase K-12 education support from the state, increase support for early child education from the state, bring um, um, discipline in the process. Let me, when I look at the numbers, over 50% of our education dollars get spent in the bureaucracy goes into stuff. It doesn't get in the classroom with the teacher for the teacher's salary. And let's be clear, there is, the, there is only one job in America that's more important than being a great teacher, and that's being a great parent. Being a great teacher is the most important thing. <laughs> Our teachers should be treated with respect, with res support. They are professionals. They deserve to have great salaries. And the money should be with the teacher in the classroom and the students, not going into the bureaucracy. And I'm going to fight like heck to free up your school districts so that we, don't, we get rid of these unfunded mandates and these unnecessary tests and the, the bureaucracy that's sucking the resources out of the system rather than with the teacher. Let great teachers teach. Pay them well. Let's pay them even more if they're great at their, at their profession. And let's have great teachers support it and give them the freedom to teach and do their jobs. And then, and then here's really key. We've got to bring back vocational training, technical training, job training back into our public school systems again. Yeah. Now, you guys are very blessed. You guys got Blackhawk here. You guys, you know, we, we have uh, good opportunities with our community colleges. I want to see more partnerships between our high schools, our community colleges, and our local employers. We should be forming partnerships all over the state. Let's train our young people and get them high school course credit, get them community college course credit for job training so they can step right in and their parents don't have to come out of pocket for a lot of extra money and course payments so that our kids can step right into careers, not minimum wage jobs, careers 
with technical and vocational training right in when they're 18, 19, 20 and get them productive and working hard. You know what, as I've traveled the state, I've met with hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of business owners. Many of them have said, Bruce, we're struggling in Illinois because of the regulations and taxes, but you know what, we've got jobs here. We'd like to hire more people. We can't find young people with technical skills to take these jobs. And other states do. Iowa has more training. Uh, Indiana, I've heard, Indiana's got a better tra vocational training system going. We have got to change that. That's a failure of our education system, and I'm going to make it a priority. Let's get, I want every child who wants to go to a four-year college and study pre-architecture or law or medicine, terrific. I push it. That's great. But that's not for everybody. Not everybody should go to a four-year college, or wants to or can afford a four-year college. But everybody can have a great career. Everybody can choose, if they don't choose a four-year, they can choose to get vocational training and be, have skills so they can have a good income and rising wages and a good life. And we've got to make that opportunity available for them. And now let's talk about the government itself. Our government needs to be reformed. i got to tell you, I'm a business guy, I'm not a politician. I've never been in government. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I've, been, I've been in there for a little while now. Uh, yeah. I'll tell you, your tax dollars are not working very well for you. I can tell you that. Tell you that. Everywhere, everywhere, everywhere I look at it, it's like, oh goodness. And I put that, I mean, that it's, it's uh, you know what, that's what's frustrating. There's a lot of good people in government. There are. But they haven't been led. They haven't been managed. They haven't been incentivized. And in fact, the structure's in place to push them to work less effectively. And it's, it's put in place to cause more hiring and, and higher expense, but not higher productivity. That's wrong. You deserve value for your tax dollars. We've got to get value for your tax dollars. So I'm going I'm to push hard to reform government. And as governor, I can lead a lot of this. We're putting together a very talented team. I'm going to move away from, you, you, know, you guys know, I've been here saying it many times, we have, we have the most units of government of any state in America, by far. We have over 7,000 units of government. Come on. We have double the average state. I don't know what Iowa's number is, but I know it's a lot less. We have 2,000 more units of government than the number two state. Come on. And, that's, and there's cronyism and pensions and payoffs and boards and salaries. We don't need all that. We can't afford all that. And we've got to change that. Now, here's, here's a really big deal. And some people are cranky at me. Again, some of my union buddies, and I got a lot of union support, but some of my union buddies are cranky with me. It's okay. I, I'm, my job is to take arrows and lead. Let me tell you something. Our bidding process on our construction process for government is out of control, and it's not fair. We, we put in these bidding rules and these restrictions and these forced wage levels in bidding on construction projects for our schools, for our roads, for our bridges, for our locks, our dams, our canals. And I want to be an infrastructure governor. I want huge infrastructure investment. I want to spend billions, well, smartly, of your money to build out our infrastructure, especially here in the Quad Cities area with our bridges and our roads and our systems. We need world-class infrastructure, and I want to spend billions to do it. It's going to cost us billions. But you know what? If because of these wage restrictions and PLAs and restrictions on our bidding process, it costs, I've seen the numbers, I'm a data guy. It can cost us anywhere from 15% to 35% more per project because of these restrictions that we put in place. Now, pick an average number. I was going to pay myself and help some friends chip in to fix up the governor's mansion where I'm living now because it's been run down and trashed. And uh, they said, well, you could, at first they said, no, you can't do it. The taxpayers got to pay for that. And I said, I'm trying to help out the taxpayers. Why should I? I'll pay for it. And they said, well, and then finally they said, well, okay, maybe you can't. And then, and then I said, I said I went out to get some, some bids, and they said, no, 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 you have to do the bidding process and the prevailing wage, and you've got to pay. I said, I just want to fix up the roof in the basement and get the elevator. They said, no, no, you've got to go through the process. I said, why? And I looked at the that, that it's going to cost me 22% more than with just a regular bidding process to, to get the mansion fixed. And that's about pretty average. About, on average, we're paying about 22% more than we otherwise would when we build a new school, when we build a new road, when we build a new bridge. That ain't right. Why? Think of that's That's your money. We're spending more than we need to. And that means if we have to spend 22 cents more for every dollar, that's fewer schools we can build. That's fewer bridges we can fix. That's fewer roads we can construct because we have to spend that much. Let's free up. If we want to spend billions, we can save hundreds of millions and billions over time 
That allows us to do more infrastructure. We can have more construction and more jobs and better schools. Let's get more jobs, more infrastructure, by being efficient in the bidding process. Some people are cranky at me for saying it, but I'll say it. That's the right answer. That's what's fair. And I'm going to push that, push that um, really hard. Now here, so. now here's, one, here's one other thing that people are really cranky at me, because I'm saying, I'm saying inside the government, I want people to be able to join a union or not join a union. They should be free to choose. People are saying cranky. You shouldn't have to be forced to join a union to work in the government. I just don't believe that. Well, we can argue about it, whatever. I believe that very strongly. But here's, here's what really frosts me. We have a conflict of interest inside the government. If I'm a government union leader, and I go to you, and you're running for office, you're running the legislature or governor or whatever, and you're running, and I say, okay, I'm going to give you $4 million for your election. I'll give you 5,000 of our members paid for by taxpayers to work on your campaign. And then when you get in office, I want to negotiate my pension with you, and I want to negotiate my work with you, and I want to negotiate my health care with you. Now, you remember who got you in that office. Hello? That's a conflict of interest. We don't, we don't. You know what? We restrict, we restrict businesses, companies, and individuals who contract with the state from giving campaign contributions. It's restricted. It should be restricted because it's a conflict. But uh, government union leaders who are 100% contracting with the state, they're not limited at all. That's not right. That's wrong. It's a conflict. That we should change that. It's a, people say, well, Bruce, it's free speech. Look, I'm not against free speech. But come on. I, I used to contract, I used to run the pensions for teachers and police officers, and I'm proud of the track record. I did the heck of a job for teachers and police officers in Illinois. Phenomenal. Double the stock market return so they get a better retirement. But I was restricted from giving pol pol to politicians. Fine. Fine. Why? But if you're contracting, you ought to be restricted. I'll tell you another one where there's a conflict and it's causing us trouble. Healthcare providers. Uh, hospitals and doctors who contract with Medicaid are given huge campaign donations to the politicians that are manipulating our Medicaid program. That's a conflict of interest. We should stop that as well. We've got to get, let's get the government working for the people. Let's get the special deals out, the special interests out of it, and let's have it run for you. And that's why I tell you, the other thing, I, some people are cranky at me for it, and some members of the General Assembly are cranky for it. It's okay, I take arrows, that's my job. I believe one of the ways we can help fix this system of government is to get term limits in place on the elected officials. Yeah. 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 You know what? Public service should be public service. It shouldn't be a career where you're making money, and often a lot of money, because of the power of your political position. There's too many people who are running government as a family business. That's wrong. They should be serving you. We should be serving each other. That's what, that's what government should be. You know, when George Washington founded America, he could have been president for life. A lot of Americans wanted George Washington to be king. He said, no, I'll be a public servant. I'll work for eight years. He did that voluntarily. That wasn't a rule. He just did it. That changed the course of American history. America was one of the few countries that got democracy early and didn't become a dictatorship. Well, let me tell you, we need a little of that mindset in Springfield. We actually need a lot of that mindset in Springfield. And, and people disagree with me. They say, they say, Bruce, you know what? But you're, Bruce, you're, you're wrong. That'll just empower the lobbyists, or that'll just empower the bureaucracy. And I say, okay, well, maybe I don't agree with you. But look, um, the deciders are the elected officials. The deciders have the power. The person in office has the power to decide. And I want people who are there for the right reasons. They're not there for the long-term power of it and the money from it. And I want them to serve. Eight years is a long time. You don't have to stay in any one job more than eight years. And frankly, if you really want to be a public servant, terrific, God bless you. You don't have to stay in that one job. There's a lot of jobs in public service. There's a lot of places you can serve. You don't have to get locked into one place where you're locked into the special interests and they all get, you get encrusted in the system and you're doing the insider. The insider dealing goes way up when somebody's locked in for a long period of time. And we've got to change it. And all I'm asking is, let the voters decide. Just let the voters decide. If you, if, you're, if you disagree with me and you don't think term limits is a good idea, vote against it. That's fine. I, I'll live with what the vote of, with the will of the people. But I just want to get it out there on the ballot and let you guys decide about it. That's all I'm asking. Let the voters decide.
So we've got a big bold agenda. It's, it's, it's definitely shaking up Springfield. There's caused a lot of you know consternation about it. That's good. We need to shake things up. You know what? Uh, if you would like to learn more about the agenda, we've got the full complete agenda out there at Illinois.gov. You can see my state of the state speech. You can see the list of our full agenda policy. Come to Illinois.gov. It's right there about how we're going to get the Illinois turnaround done. And I'm going to call on you. The, the Quad Cities area, Rock Island County, Moline's been great for me, and I, I'm an advocate. I will judge my quality as governor by how well your economy is booming and how good your schools are here. I'm going to measure myself, and I want to hold you guys hold me accountable. Hold me accountable. But I'm going to call on you. I'm going to need you to write letters. I'm going to need you to make phone calls. Maybe take a day trip and come to Lincoln Museum, but go knock on some legislators' doors when we got some key votes coming up, and kind of say, hey, guys, this matters. Vote the right way. Vote on the reform agenda. I'm going to need your help because politicians respond to pressure, and I need your help to create some pressure. If we work together, we can restore the pride and the prosperity in Illinois. We can make Illinois the greatest state and the greatest nation on earth. We'll do that together. God bless you all. I look forward to working for you. Thank you very much.